Welcome back to Educator.com. This is the lesson on earthquakes, volcanoes, and other disasters. All right, a little geologic overview for you. This is actually somewhat of a review from general biology. Uh, the time scales, in terms of measuring periods of time on Earth, partially based on geologic evidence. Eons are the longest periods of time. Uh, within eons, you have eras. Within eras, you have periods. Within those, you have epochs, and then within those, you have stages. Here are the three most lengthy uh, periods or increments. So you can see that we have this really long eon, uh, Phanerozoic, uh, and then in there, we have eras and periods. So some key principles of the geologic time scale. Rock layers, or strata, are laid down subsequently, with each stratum representing a slice of time. Now that makes sense. Uh, when you have um, movement within the crust and you get, you know, certain violent earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, etc., uh, along with erosion over time, you can see where the sides of mountains have clear, defined layers. Um, you can, like, trace the line and see, like, oh, yeah, the rocks are a little different up there, a little different right below that line. And those are the, uh, the, the strata marks we're talking about. And then the principle of superposition has to do with that, um, meaning layers of soil or, or rock that are above others are not as old. So the principle is that the further down we go, the older uh, the stratum we're looking at. So related to that information, just want to go over some uh, major events in these periods of geologic time. And like I said, this is somewhat of a review from biology, but this does apply to environmental science as well. When we go prior to the Cambrian period here, you can say that in here you have the pre-Cambrian. And when we go that far back, when we go, you know, further back than about half a billion years ago, we're looking at primitive marine life. You know, we're talking about uh, very simple multicellular organisms and a lot of unicellular organisms. Then we get into uh, the Cambrian period, right in here. You may have heard of the Cambrian explosion. And that is an explosion of body forms, of, of life forms. Um, not many of them were successful, only some of them were, and they have descendants that are alive today. Uh, but there's plenty of fossil evidence to show that um, there was this explosion of, of species that occurred, a lot of invertebrate species in the ocean, with a lot of different strange body plans and body styles. Um, after that abundant invertebrate explosion, we get to the next one, the Ordovician. You're looking at the first vertebrates. I'm going to write first vert, and of course those were fishes. And around that time you start seeing like, you know, more of the uh, algae we're used to seeing in terms of um, those photosynthetic organisms becoming, becoming a little bit more complex. When we get into the, uh, the next one, we're talking about land vertebrates. At that point, not quite the fully developed reptiles we're used to seeing, you know, a couple hundred million years later. We're talking about um, some fish that had primitive lung uh, capabilities, or we're talking about the, uh, you know, ancestors of modern day amphibians. The Devonian, there we could say that, that is truly the age of fish, the age of fishes, because in terms of the, uh, the vast numbers and really successful forms of fish coming into being, uh, yeah. And then in here, instead of calling them Mississippian and Pennsylvanian, I'm going to refer to this as the Carboniferous period. And that's actually a pretty common term. Uh, Carboniferous forests, you're going to see that term uh, if you do a search of this, you know, online or in a textbook. So Carboniferous period, having to do with coal swamps. And what that's referring to is the majority of the coal that we mine today underground. We're talking about uh, death of millions and millions and millions and millions of plants during that period of time that led to the formation of coal today. Uh, you know, that, that's led over millions of years to what we extract out of the ground as a fossil fuel. 
Um, so yeah, thank you Carboniferous Forests during mostly this time period. <laughs> and then Permian, there actually was a major extinction event during the Permian period, but we could say that reptiles really started to get their heyday. Uh, expansion of reptiles uh, to all different areas of the globe. And just after that is what we could call the age of the dinosaur. Dinos, right, beginning with uh, the Triassic period into the Jurassic and into the Cretaceous, we see uh, dinosaurs, uh, Cretaceous period, they, you know, gradually went away. Um, actually, not quite as gradual. Uh, you can look into the extinction of dinosaurs for the various theories regarding that. But um, dinosaurs really plentiful during this period of time, and also the first birds during this period of time, and the first mammals. Now, based on fossil evidence, mammals came before birds. Um, birds a little over 100 million years ago, and, and mammals closer to 200 million years ago. But the mammals that existed during the age of dinosaurs were quite tiny on average. And then you get into uh, the first flowers, probably during the Cretaceous. And then once you get to the tertiary period, the other name for this, by the way, is the uh, Paleogene period. And then the Quaternary, I've also heard the term Neogene. But Paleogene, uh, you're talking about the first men. Now by men, I mean hominins. Um, so, of course, it's, it's closer to the end of this tertiary period. Um, the first hominins, you know, individuals walking on two legs that looked more like us than an ape. Um, we're talking about that far back. And then uh, flowers became, you know, extremely successful. Flowering plants were a lot more successful during that period. And, of course, during the Neogene, civilization... Hasn't been around for that long relative to the age of the Earth and relative to all these periods of time. Um, just another uh, geologic relationship to this. Um, right in here is when the Appalachian Mountains started to form, which is interesting to think, wow, that far back. And then when you get in, up into the uh, Mesozoic, um, Rocky Mountains uh, formed around that period of time. Um, it's kind of interesting to think about. 